What's up guys? Happy Wednesday. Had to bust out an order of sweet greens early this morning. We did get produce early. He said he's going to be showing up pretty early now. So that's good news. We won't be waiting around on Wednesdays anymore. I also didn't get a chance to do my bottle prep for today's ship yesterday. So we've been busy making summer slim downs. A lot of our regulars right now are cleansing. We've got a one day SSD up there. Um, always try and make extras when I'm making them because it's that time of year. We're gonna press our beet juice lineup today. Sweet beets, strong beets, unicorns. See what else we dive into. I gotta finish rinsing these bottles. I've got some in the dishwasher too that un need unloaded. Then we're gonna jump into today. Checking our numbers for this week. Yeah, apples are expensive. 66 for a case. Bummer. Um, checking to see if there's a difference in Gala and Granny. Um, Cause I like to use a Granny Smith apple in our sweet beet. It just really brightens everything up it's so good. If y'all follow me on the gram, you know, we've been waiting on these pineapples to ripen up for about a week. I used a lot of them yesterday. Made shark juice. Y'all came after me on the gram for not putting the shark and the shark juice. I will not make that mistake again. Lots of fun pineapple recipes, uh, pineapple shots, shark juice, and we made tropical greens as well. Grab some greeny. I'm not gonna go too crazy. We've got a lot of people cleansing right now. So, so tiny, look how small that is. Beautiful batch of oranges. Little pro tip for storing produce. I put the boxes in here and then I just cut out a little notch and then you can quickly grab stuff without having to get the box out. Ooh, that's a good spicy ginger. The little, I always find the little nubbed ginger, uh, not the big one that's like really spread out and looks like fingers. Uh, the little nubs are extra spicy. All the recipes you're about to watch me make today are in our recipe ebook. If you're looking for menu development, highly recommend checking out that resource. Um, just makes developing a menu so easy. Takes all the time and effort, all the money spent on produce to cost out single ingredient items, just completely gets rid of that. So if you're looking for recipes, check out our recipe ebook. It's linked down in the description. I keep thinking these are chiga beets because they're so light. Maybe this one is. Working with a samic, I always start with the hard root veggies or superfoods uh, like spinach, ginger, get a nice fine grind on those and then add in the softer liquid bases. They don't need as long to grind as the harder stuff does. That's what we're going for, fine slaw. And then we'll throw in the oranges and apples and hit it again until uh, it all comes together, until you can't see any more big chunks in the processor. It's about 15 to 20 seconds. having lid problems. Lid problems. The customers be looking out for us. The black ones fit those. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and that's why I bought those cups. These black lids fit those cups. What, did it not fit? It fit. Woo! <laughs> Sorry for the clap. We're fine, cups are good. We're in a good spot. Packaging these days, y'all. Packaging. It's a struggle. We're also using the sleeves from Jordan and Adam's wedding. It's cozy. Cozy vibes. It's supposed to be nice today, but it's still cold this morning. It's supposed to be really 
We are hanging on there. We're all fighting off some seasonal depression disorder. Summer, come soon. Did you just fling whipped cream everywhere? ginger shots social media time hi guys I wanted to run you through this one day cleanse that's available um, so you knew what you were getting if you were interested in it it's $58 one day cleanse you drink all of them in one day you start with your celery juice always love when a customer can grab a juice fresh off the press strong beat Moving on to our unicorn, which is a mixture of pumpkin seed milk and juice. Tastes like a creamsicle, it's really good. Our box collection. I've been making our unicorn all in one press, so I'll blend the pumpkin seeds in water. Jordan's freaking out behind the camera. I blend the pumpkin seeds in water, pour them straight into the press bag and then I'll add the juice recipe on top of that. Hit that for about 20 seconds into the press bag. And we'll get the produce ground up. This looks so pretty coming out of the press chamber. It's just that milky, creamy goodness. We made strawberry unicorns last week for Jordan's birthday. By far my favorite unicorn, strawberry unicorns. Just have to be careful with the numbers of those berries. They can quickly drive up your cost of goods. So if you see them on sale in the frozen section, swoop that. We can normally get a really good deal on them. I think it's a couple bucks a pound. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's a good deal when I've previously looked at our numbers. <laughs> Getting a nice little lunch rush. I do like to give this one a stir so those pumpkin seeds don't find a way out and shoot straight out the top. You can kind of mix it in with the apples. It gives it some texture. Presses really well. These are going to separate weird, but don't worry. After uh, 24 hours, the milk settles to the bottom and they look fine. Just don't give them another shake. Creamy goodness. This is one of my nephew's favorite juices. He did ask for a blue juice today. Oh, wow. Has he had the shark juice? Oh, he did have it once, yeah. He was very adamant about it. Blue, blue, blue. blue. This, these are our th most three popular beet juices. We've got a mixture of sweet and strong here, so our strong beet has no fructose. The only fruit in it is lemon. If you're a veggie lover, that one's for you for sure. Um, great for gut health. Beets are great for um, oxygenating the blood. They're really high in nitrates. Our sweet beet is one of our all-time best-selling juices. We've served this recipe for, what, the entirety of the business? Eight, nine years, sweet beet? Yeah. It's just, it tastes like candy. If you want the benefits of beets but don't like uh, the flavor, sweet beet is for you. And last year, a year ago, uh, we dropped the unicorn juice and it has been, you can tell by the batch size, um, it has been a bestseller for the last year or so. What you see up in fridge stock is typically what we sell in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we rarely keep product over that. Um, so batch sizes just depends on what's selling at the moment, what's hot. And these have also been picked through throughout the day. So lots of fun beet juices. If you're looking for awesome recipes, highly recommend checking out our recipe ebook. Uh, we've been dialing these recipes in for a long time. So they really um, are fine tuned, dialed in. This one has rosemary in it. It's got like a bright uh, lemony kind of sour uh, flavor and then the rosemary really plays off the earthiness of the cabbage and the beet. This tastes like candy. This tastes like a creamsicle. Um, it's just all solid options. I'm going to get these back in the fridge and then we're going to do a question of the day. Successful box removal. Much better. Also got all of our new shop bottles put up so mission accomplished. Nothing better than a clean kitchen. I still got to finish up some bottles, get bottles ready for tomorrow. Jordan's got some stuff on her mind. We're gonna mic her up. Is it my turn? Am I a go? You are clear for liftoff. 
Okay, so the number of people I talk to that have no idea what their profit margins are, and then they get our cost per unit calculator, and they're like, holy crap, my cost of goods is 45%, 50%, when it should be 20% or 30%. You, can't, you pretty much cannot make a profit. You're essentially losing money if your profit margins or your cost of goods, the produce it takes to make the juice is 50%. You're almost paying your customer to drink that juice um, when you take into account labor, equipment, rent, taxes, all of it. Um, so if you do not know your profit margin, you are, you are essentially wasting time. Like if you don't know your profit margins, you should not be serving. You products. shouldn't be selling juice, correct? Because unless you consider yourself in the a trial phase of I'm okay for making I'm okay with making juice for free or paying my customers to drink my juice to get feedback. <laughs> you know, but even then if you're putting a product out there and putting a price on it and saying this is my juice and this is what I charge, um, you're setting a standard and an expectation for your customer. And then if a, two months from now you're like, oh, just kidding, guys, pricing is this. It's just not the best thing to do to your customers. Um, so I'll, I'll, almost the first step you should be doing when you're opening your juice bar is, is getting a, either our cost per unit calculator or you thoroughly know how to price out your juices and each and each one of them and you have a system for when produce changes and a case of apples goes from forty dollars to sixty five dollars and you can quickly go in and adjust your pricing as necessary because you're just you're wasting your time and you're it's get, you're gonna get so discouraged because you're not gonna see traction you're not gonna see income come in and stay in your bank you're not gonna be able to reinvest in your business you're gonna feel so discouraged and then also the mental toll of when you don't know your numbers and you you're just working kinda of haphazardly and you're just like whoa I'm just gonna keep moving keep moving and it'll work out that subconsciously causes so much stress on your brain because in the back of your mind you know that you don't know your numbers yeah. and you're like I just hope I'm making a profit I'm doing what the local bars are doing I'm looking at my competition I'm charging what everyone charges um, and here's a mistake. You might think that you might be charging what everyone charges, um, but you might have a, a produce supplier that's charging you out the wazoo and you don't know it. You know, you might think like, this is just normal. These are normal prices. Maybe they're not normal and you're their only customer. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't really know anything until you look at your numbers and see my profit margins, my cost of goods for each and every juice is 20 to 25% or less. And I can confidently make and serve each juice and know every juice that goes out the door, I'm making a profit on that juice, um, which then allows me to reinvest in my business and continue to grow and make better products and serve more of our community. So um, it's just, it, it's sad because we put so much work into our juice bars, right? We put so much work into this. And if we don't know the basics of business, you know, so this there has to be, there has to be a good combo of like, I'm emotional about my business and I love it and my why fuels my, my work. But also, this is a business and we have to make a profit or we're gonna go out of business in a year and I'm gonna take a big mental hit on all of this. So you gotta put on your business brain and you gotta put on your emotional brain and you gotta do both because the emotional brain allows you to connect with your customers more than anyone else will. It allows you to, it makes you stand out from a franchise. A franchise doesn't have the emotional brain. They're just a franchise with pretty marketing. Um, a local, a locally owned juice bar like all of us, we connect with our customers in a different kind of way and we serve them better because so. But a franchise got that business brain and they know their cost of goods. They know all of their categories and their percentages and what things are supposed to look like. Um, so don't let that be the, the part that ruins it for us, you know? You gotta say, you just gotta put on your big girl pants and you gotta say, I'm, bun I'm gonna know my numbers. And the other thing is I talk to so many people and they're like, oh, this hurts. Like when they actually start looking at their numbers, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not making a profit. This really hurts. This is hard, you know? Every, you're gonna have a million times in your business where you say, this is really hard and I wanna give up. It's that gut feeling of defeat like I can't do this I'm, I'm not equipped I don't know enough um, like it, it's a, it's a sucky feeling <laughs> of a, this dark gloomy cloud of like where this is just gonna fail but you just got to say no it's not gonna happen I'm just gonna step up to the plate and instead of being like mm, my cost of goods is 50% this isn't gonna work 
say, let's make it work. Let's look at the numbers. Let's see what can we remove? What can we add? What? Let's look at our liquid bases. Which one's more affordable? You have to be willing to pivot and step up to the plate and say, I'm gonna do this. Like, I'm gonna do it and I can do it. And that's when you win, is you look at the problem and you say, instead of being like, oh, knocked down, we're done. We're, we're like, oh, stand up stronger. Let's fix it and move on. So it's just, it, it's kind of heartbreaking because all these people, they don't make a, you know, they're not making a profit and they don't know their numbers and they're just wishing and hoping they're gonna win. Yeah, and you can't run a business like that. No, you, gotta you have to numbers. run your business. Your business does not run you. We've mm -hmm. talked about that so many times. Yes. Um, just from like a juicer standpoint, there has been a lot of freedom in creating recipes and just since we've developed the Know Your Numbers calculator, yeah. um, I have more freedom because I am the one making this juice. I am the one yes. putting these products out. Um, so that all kind of falls on me if we're not checking in regularly. Um, but just having the freedom to know, like, pineapples are cheap right now. Uh -huh. Pumpkin seed milk is priced really well. We can up things, play with things. I mean, we're constantly messing around with things, and it just provides so much freedom knowing that our numbers are solid, and whatever we put out, whatever daily special, um, it's going to lead to cash flow coming back yeah. into our business. It goes back to the phrase, knowledge is power. When you know what things are, you can make savvy business moves. When you know pineapples this week were dirt cheap, you can make a ton of pineapple specials and every pineapple juice that's going out the door, you're making crazy good profit. Which on. we did this week. Right? Yes. <laughs> Real it, example. Really look at your numbers and study them and know them and know when a deal comes in, we're going to capitalize on that deal. You don't know that if you're just being a robot operating, boop, 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 we always do the same thing, we make it, we hope this. No. Be Become a savvy business person. Knowledge is power, know your numbers, know every part of your business, the ins and the outs. And with that, you'll be able to make all these little wins, okay? It's a bunch of little wins that collectively make a huge win. That's when, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, you look and you go, that was a great freaking month. That was a great year. We freaking did it. You did it because you were intentional. You had knowledge and you looked at every single decision and you said, we're going to capitalize on every decision and make the right one. When packaging goes on sale, you buy it. When this goes on sale, you do it. When you see that the weather's nice, you run a deal, you look at your numbers and you say, you know what? We got some wiggle room on shark juice. Let's run a deal, dollar off. And that brings in a ton of customer. You just got to get really savvy. And it's a fun game to play. When you look at it, it instead of, I will say also that you can, just game. you can only have fun like that. You can only be savvy and, and it's this, is this. When you have margin in your business and mental margin to be able to tackle and have fun, if you're so stressed out that you took out debt and this and that and it's just like, oh my gosh, I feel so much pressure and I'm stressed, you don't get to have the little fun because you're so stressed about this and this and this. You gotta so, pay rent this month. Yes. Gotta, blah, blah, blah. Create, set things up so you have margin in life, so that you have financial margin, so you can, when th something goes on sale and you can buy in bulk, you have that financial margin to capture capitalize on that deal when things this and this and this you create margin in your life so that you can do the fun little things it's the difference between create time margin so that when you have an opportunity to do this today you have the time margin to fit it in just just set things up so you got some wiggle room to have some fun and to not to be so stressed because you're good but you do create margin by being focused on those little things so it's like a it's like a boom 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 thing <laughs> Okay. Uh, that was our podcast was moment. Our podcast. <laughs> Basically, the resources we talked about, they're linked below. We're here to help you guys um, so y'all can learn from our mistakes because we've been there. That's, that's what this whole thing is about. What we do is we've been there and we constantly think, man, it would have been nice for somebody to kind of guide us and lead us. Um, so we provide that for y'all and we love doing it because we just want to see everyone win. The more juice flow in, the better. It helps us all as an industry and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost it today. <laughs>